What's up, nerds? Drea here. Hmm, I want to talk about Princess Tutu. I've been watching anime for a long time, and I feel like anime from my youth tends to get overshadowed by all these new 10 out of 10 series and fights over the big three from the 90s and early 2000s. Well, today we're going to start a series talking about anime that doesn't get the spotlight as much. Starting with Princess Tutu. So when I was a kid, I was really into dance, and I was really into martial arts. I asked my parents if I could take classes, and they said that I needed to pick one and I couldn't do both. So I picked martial arts. And I didn't get to do classes in either. It just happened to work out that way. Or not work out that way. But ever since then, I've still been obsessed with dance. Since I wasn't able to take classes, I started renting videos from the library. Yes, they were VHS. I did ballet, hula, belly dancing, contemporary, basically everything I could get my hands on. Also, I watched all the Barbie movies that had dancing, which seems like it would be a bad place to start, but they actually motion captured real dancers for those, so yeah, it was a good place to start. Anyway, at the same time that I was getting into dance, I was also getting into more and more anime. I was living with my grandmother for a while, and she had a bunch of video on demand channels. Back before, you know, every video was on demand. And one of those channels was for anime. I got introduced to a lot of series on this channel, the Anime Network, which is now High Dive. Kaleidostar, Azumanga Daio, This Ugly Yet Beautiful World, which to this day I still have no idea what that was, Gravitation, and of course, Princess Tutu. Princess Tutu is one of those series that I feel like a lot of people just write off because of the stupid sounding name. Well, let me tell you, you guys are doing yourselves a disservice because this is a really good series, but not a great one. And I will explain that later. So what is this series even about? Well, ballet, of course, and a lot of magic. We start with the backstory of Drosselmeyer. By the way, if you've read a lot of classical literature or have seen a lot of ballet, you're going to come across a lot of names that you recognize. Drosselmeyer had the power to make his stories come to life. Before he could finish his final story, The Prince and the Raven, he died. So the story continued forever. Eventually, the evil raven was able to enter the real world, and the prince followed after him to seal the raven away by taking out his own heart. But this was still not the end of the story. The story bleeds into and takes over a small town where the citizens are now becoming part of the story. Here we meet our hero. Her name is Duck. So I'm going to take a break from talking about the story to gripe about a translation thing that really bugs me. So I've only seen the series in English. If you saw last week's video, I always continue a series in the language that I started it in. Unless circumstances come up, which that doesn't happen very often. So they elected to fully translate her name as Duck, which her name would have been Ahiru, which, you know, actually sounds like a real name, and I feel like they should have kept it that way. And this was actually a pretty common translation thing in the early 2000s, since translations and localizations were not as refined as they are now. I'll just say, I really hate it. And we'll move on. Going back to the story, Duck is a ballet student who dreams of being a prima ballerina. There's only one problem. She sucks. The characters quip that not only is her name Duck, but she dances like one too. But she keeps trying her best and keeps dreaming of one day being as good as the students in the advanced class, specifically like the graceful Rue and her silent boyfriend Muto. One day, Muto falls out a window while trying to save a baby bird, and Duck dies to save him when... She turns into Princess Tutu, a character from The Prince and the Raven. It turns out that Muto is also a character from the story, the prince himself. Duck realizes that only she can find the lost shards of the prince's heart and return it to him to defeat the raven for good and save the town. But it also turns out that her name wasn't just a cruel joke. She really was a duck after all. Why? Well, you gotta watch the show. <laughs> Let me get this out here you absolutely should watch Princess Tutu. It's 26 episodes, it's streaming online, just please watch it. And if you don't want to stream it online and you know me in real life, I will let you borrow my box set. 
All that backstory and all those twists were just in like the first couple episodes and it doesn't stop. Now here's where I get into the whole it's good but not great thing. What really holds Princess Tutu back is the animation. There is a lot of dancing in the series, but most of it is done with still frames and slow motion. In the moment, you can kind of forget and the emotion of the scene carries you through with the cheats, but when you really look at it, you can tell. This series is pretty low budget when it comes to action, and that's because at the time, anime aimed at young girls just didn't get the budget the boy stuff was getting. Yeah, I know, I, I kind of buried the lead, I didn't want to say it, but yes, this is technically a kid's anime. I actually watched this with my niece when she was little. Even though it does have like a few swear words, I do think this is a pretty good starter for kids wanting to get into anime. Anyway, yeah, this is a series that could really use a good reboot with some nice animation. Unlike Tokyo Mew Mew New. Video's coming on that one. And animation for dancing has really come a long way. Just look at Dance Dance Dancer or idol shows like Idolish 7. It can be done. So let's talk about the dub. I like most of it aside from Duck being named Duck. Lucy Christian is one of my favorite voice actors and she plays Duck as a flighty but sincere young girl. And when she's Princess Tutu, she sounds so refined. I love it. Then Jessica Boone, who plays an amazing one-to-one -one version of Chiyo-chan and Azumanga Daio, is fantastic as the stuck-up but also low-key kind Rue. Fantastic performance. And Chris Patton as Fakir? Childhood crush. And Jay Hickman does his best with Muto, but I think he sounds a little bit too whispery at times. Overall, the dub is very well done for the time. Up there with the aforementioned Azumanga Daio, and only one part makes me think of Fruits Basket 2001. As I've mentioned several times, please watch this series. It's good. And not like how Dean Angel broke my heart by not actually being good, it's actually good. You can watch Princess Tutu on High Dive or Amazon Prime Video. There is a two volume manga version that is actually pretty different from the anime, but it is well out of print. Check your library. Well, that's gonna do it for this week. Thanks everyone for watching. Please leave me a like and let me know in the comments what older anime you think I should talk about. And yeah, I'm not enjoying the Tokyo Mew Mew reboot. I'm gonna wait until a few more episodes are out, but oh boy, did they drop the ball on this one. Please subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell so you're notified when I decide to keep a decent schedule. At this point, even I don't know when videos are coming out. Also check out my Instagram and Facebook pages where I post twice a week, and my TikTok where I post whenever I see something that makes me cry. Please have a great rest of your day, week, month, and year, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye! I didn't know that a part of getting older was going to be the threat of having heartburn 24-7. Because I have heartburn 24-7. I don't like not being able to eat certain things. This is not fun. I'm not having a good time.